In truth, this is a time to rejoice, for the sacred icon has been found. With it, our path is clear, and nothing, not even the flood, can stop it. Boo. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and today we're talking about Halo Infinite. With Halo Infinite finally getting its long-awaited Season 4 update, fans old and new are actually asking the question of, does Halo Infinite actually feel complete? Should we consider Season 4 the best so far, and is this Season 4 just hype, or is it actually good enough for us to jump back into the game? Let's jump right into this. Let's start off with the good. Infection finally makes a return, and honestly, I am just happy that not only was my blue balls finally cured but we actually get to play the kind of foundational game mode that has been a part of halo since halo 3 i haven't been this excited or happy since seeing master chief put his helmet back on in the halo tv show you have a sniper? oh let's arrive get out of here get out of here oh my god why is this punching give me a, give me some of this i'm the cleansing <laughs> I'm the cleansing! And in my complete opinion, I think that this is one of the best renditions of Infection that I've seen in the entire series. What you say is heresy. And I'm sure that people are already getting the tomatoes to throw right at me, but I'll tell you this. When was the last time you had this much fun playing the Infection game mode? I honestly think it's better than Halo 5's, Halo 4's, and maybe you can compare it to Halo Reach's, but at the end of the day, this is a great rendition of the game mode and I've had a blast playing it so far. I never really understood why fans just like the crap on this game mode just because it was made by 3 for 3. Now granted, I don't think this is necessarily the greatest game ever made, but when you start comparing Infection to one of the greatest games ever in Halo 3, yeah, sure, you, you can pick apart the different problems that it might have, but to be honest, Halo Infinite's Infection game mode doesn't really have a lot of issues that you can really name or point out that make it a bad game mode to play. Even when you look back at Halo Reach and Halo 3's Infection game mode, it didn't necessarily have an art style that made it unique. It adds a little bit of story element to the game mode, and I'm all for it. Sure, you, you might say that Halo 4's Infection with the Flood might be considered the better theme overall, but you gotta give Halo Infinite a lot of credit. This theme for Infection is pretty badass, and it does make Eratus a lot more cooler when you think about him now. The progression system is probably one of my most really loved aspects of this update. The progression system finally cures my ever-growing pain in my heart over the fact that we haven't had anything to grind for this entire time, and it actually gives us something that we can constantly fight and gain a rank to attach to our player. Using similar ranks to Halo Reach with its military rank style of progression does give a lot of fans hope and happiness to see this kind of added into the season. And it actually tells us that 3 for 3 is actually listening to us when we constantly are asking for progression system. 270 different ranks to unlock gives you something to grind for and it feels as if we'll be playing this for a long duration of time and for some reason you'll have fans out there that are trying to dig and find ways to make an argument against this it's essentially the equivalent of them trying to throw crap against the wall and seeing what sticks it's like they're almost in a perpetual state of crying over the hatred of three for three that they have to find a way to make this progression system a major negative when and to be honest it's better than any progression system that 3 for 3 has ever had since they took over the IP. And sure, if you compare it to Halo Reach and Halo 3, which were the best progression systems in the series, then yeah, yeah, you might be able to pick out some problems. But to be honest, this is 3 for 3's best we've seen so far, and you gotta give them some credit here. And honestly, the inclusion of the new maps in Forest and Scar have been great when you actually get to play them. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. I have been sitting here waiting roughly maybe 72 hours to try to actually get to have access to Forest and Scar throughout my entire playthrough. All the time trying to play these new maps. And when I finally get access to them, I am absolutely in love. Forest is considered, in my opinion, the best map of Halo Infinite. The size comparison to things like Behemoth and Launch Site, but actually instead of it giving you a barren wasteland with nothing to do, it actually has a lot more maneuverability. It has a lot more places to hide and attack your opponents. And to be honest, it's one of the best looking maps in the series. And I'm sure that I have a lot of people outside my house about to break down my door and beat me down to a pulp for saying that, but I'm gonna stick by it. <laughs> 
You serious? I think 343 landed on this map in a very good way. Scar, on the other hand, has some issues for sure, but it is very similar to Breaker in a way. It's a lot more limited in its kind of maneuverability on vehicles, but it's more about person-to-person -person combat. And I really like the way Scar is designed being basically in a volcano. It was almost like 343's devs had just watched Revenge of the Sith and said, hey, let's just put the Mustafar system into Halo Infinite and boom, here we go. Here's Scar. When I look at both these maps, I gotta say, 343, you didn't screw this one up. And at the time of this recording, there has been an announcement that we are seeing the Plaza remake making its entrance into the arena. Solitude gives off a lot of vibes of kind of a broken down UNSC base that has been long abandoned and it is very different compared to a lot of other levels we've seen so far. But I'll say this, based on all the things that we've seen so far, and knowing that if it's a remake of the Halo 5 classic Plaza, and I can only expect good things from here. It should be a good map for King of the Hill, Strongholds, and Team Slayer. Now with the good, we have to talk about the bad. Now one of the issues I saw right away was the inclusion of the ranked Team Slayer playlist. Now granted, don't get me wrong, I love me some ranked Team Slayer. I've been really slamming the table for giving me access to this ranked playlist since day one. But it feels as if once we finally got this ranked playlist into Halo Infinite, there has been a mixed view of how people felt about this inclusion because of the different settings that have been adjusted. Some people love it because it finally has the bandit rifle as a starting weapon, which was kind of asked for by a lot of HCS pros seeing whether it would return back to that Halo 5 pistol meta. While other people were hating the fact that we are not only getting the bandit rifle, but you're including radars back into ranked playlists. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? This kind of defeats the purpose of having an HCS style of ranked play modes because now it doesn't really keep things consistent. Me, honestly, I love the Ranked Team Slayer playlist because I finally get to play my favorite game mode in a more sweatier setting versus always having all the sweat monsters play Team Slayer Social all the time. The only thing that I find concerning is that once I finally ranked myself in the game mode, I got the gold level four, which made me feel like a scrub, and I haven't been a gold since maybe Halo 2 back in the day. You don't know how demoralizing it is that for every season I played, I was always a diamond or an onyx player, and then I literally straight up look like I'm washed in a scrub playing a game mode that is my favorite one. But it's not just me, because there's a lot of people out there that also had the same issue. I feel washed up, and I don't like that feeling at all. The other major problem I saw was with the fact that the progression system doesn't really give you a lot of things to really reward you for progressing through multiple different ranks. Now, the way the Halo progression system always was is that as you progress through certain ranks, you would unlock different armors that you can attach to your Spartan to make you feel like you are hitting a certain stage of your lifespan in this game. Halo 5 had it, Halo 4 had it, nearly every single game in the franchise had a progression system with armor unlockables that you got for just playing the game. Halo Infinite, however, takes a turn. Because of the fact that all the armors are either going to be based in a monetized system of the season passes or the store, it makes 3 for 3 kind of confused on how the hell do we now give people things for just progressing through the game? Are you telling me we're going to get armor pieces or we're getting color shaders? No, 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 no. You're going to get a bum ass emblem that shows it. Yes, I got through the bronze level private and I can show everybody that I got there. Why? Who in their right mind thought that this was the best idea? Because honestly, when you progress through a certain level, you're getting an emblem of the level you just got past. So why would you show everybody that you just got through a corporal bronze when now you're already on the sergeant level? Or better yet, on your banner, they're already telling you which rank you are in the progression system. So why do I need to have an emblem to also tell people that I got to this rank that's already on my banner. It makes no sense, and it kind of just feels like 3 for 3 just said, yeah, let's just wing it. I mean, this is something that I would expect from COD or Overwatch, but not Halo. I mean, back in the day, you used to have some pretty badass armors that you would lock for doing challenges or doing really difficult things in the game, like the Hayabusa helmet that really was really rare to obtain. You would have to grind your ass in order for you to actually obtain this one piece of armor, and when you rocked it in multiplayer, People had a profound respect for you. Give me some more unique emblems. Give me some more unique armors. Make them different. Make it feel as if, hey, I grinded so much to get this emblem, I'm gonna show it off to the world. Instead of me getting some stupid ass random corporal bronze level emblem, 
Like, what's the point of me having that? Like, imagine you go through the entire progression system and you get through Hero. Like, I want to get something badass. I want to get Master Chief teabagging Pablo Shriver in from the Halo TV show, showing that I am better than that entire series. That would be just amazing. I want more. You just missed out on opportunity. I think that's the worst part about it. And lastly, I feel as if I sound like a broken record here, but I'm going to crap on the Halo store. I feel like it's been an utter goal of mine to really show you how bad the store has been for every season review I've done on this channel. For the past 10 Halo videos I made, I've talked to you about the utter level of Scrooge McDuck that 3 for 3 has become with this store. Bundles are reaching the levels of greed I've never imagined anyone could see before. I mean, we're talking like levels of valor of the, how bad this is getting. Where I've seen bundles that were $18 all the way ranging to $34 in comparison to what we've seen in the previous season. Like, you're telling me that these armor pieces, these color shaders are the equivalent of the entire season pass of Halo Infinite. If season passes are worth $10, then a bundle that was combined with others is equating to $34? What? Are you out of your mind? And what the worst part about it is that some of these bundles actually have some really cool stuff you included in them. Like these different weapon models that you included for season four are different. They are unique. They look great. And guess what? You can only unlock them by buying them from the store. That is just so mind numbingly stupid, especially because of the fact that three for three, you all know that you need some duck here. You need to show the fans that yes, we are not trying to screw you over. Instead, you're just saying, hey, let's be as gritty as freaking possible and let's just make people get more angrier than they should be. It's just gross. And I, I think I've kind of made my case here. And with the bad, we have to talk about the straight up ugly. One of the things that makes my balls completely hurt is the fact that this season is four months in duration. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. Now, I thought to myself, there, there's no way that there, this season would not be three months. Wrong! Because of the fact in previous live streams that 3 for 3 has hosted, they brought up this concept or, or vocab term known as seasonality. If you look up seasonality in a dictionary, I can guarantee you that this is not what that is. Having a season for four months when you've promised us all that you would keep these seasons three months in duration is one of the dumbest things that you could do right away. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? And you thought to yourself that what? We weren't gonna notice that this was going to be four months long? And what's worse about it is that they kind of just skated past it. Like you got guys like Halo Follower who are looking for things to crap on you for. And you tried to, what, hide this from us? And I made this case before. In order for you to gain a lot of those followers back that don't trust you is that you need to be consistent. You need to be trustworthy. And this is really one of the dumbest things you could have done when trying to gain that trust back from people. And lastly, the PSA that was shown by Sketch or Brian Gerard really did deflate a lot of the excitement that was going along into these story-based content that we had been getting for the past few seasons. Now, if you've been living under a rock, Brian Gerard had made the announcement recently that we would no longer be getting these story-based seasonal drops from here on out. In order for them to prioritize the resources to focus specifically on the multiplayer gameplay and the content being consistent from this point going forward. Now, granted, I wasn't necessarily attached to the story of Din being one of the most boring characters of all the Halo franchise, compared to Quan from the Halo TV series. But like, still, this is not a great look to, to see that Halo Infinite is just getting rid of their entire story post-launch that they were really trying to tell us about or give us more hype going forward. You blew it! You had it all and you blew it! And the worst part about it is that they actually seem to be getting things in the right direction with season three story content. And then all of a sudden we just hear, yep, we're just axing the whole entire thing. Now I understand this is mainly due to the Microsoft cuts that happen at three for three, but it's still not a great look overall. This is just a disappointment because I feel as if season four would have continued this trend going forward. It just feels as if you missed out on this opportunity. Now, overall, when I think about season four, there are definitely a lot of good and some bad things that we have to talk about. Infection is one of the best game modes that is in Halo Infinite. And this iteration of the mode itself is honestly flawless. Maps like Forest are considered the best in the entire game. 
and I'm really excited to see how future maps can build off of this one, really mirroring that art style and the level of detail that they put into this level. The progression system is much appreciated, even though there are some things that are definitely disappointing to say about really the reward you get from playing it, but it's definitely a great thing to finally have something to grind for throughout my entire playthrough. Even though this season is the best in my opinion, I feel as if there were some things that could have been really advanced upon to make it even better than what it actually was. And if I look at Halo Infinite after season four, in my opinion, I feel as if it is a complete game. And I feel as if you're entering into the game's lifespan now, you will fully love what this game has to offer because there's a lot more content now than there was when it first dropped. I would highly recommend old players to return to Halo Infinite because I can guarantee you, you will have a blast jumping back into the combat and gameplay that they dropped during season four. And if you ask me whether or not this is the redemption arc for Halo Infinite, I'll tell you that if they continue getting dubs like season four, then this is definitely a step in the right direction. I can admit that season four was an overall success. And if they continue this on the right path going forward, and we can finally see the full potential that Halo Infinite could have been at day one. And we can finally say that Halo Infinite could be a actual success. Thank you everyone for watching. What do you think about Halo Infinite season four? Did you like what you saw? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out guys.